Hey everyone, I'm not Dan, but in this video we're going to be learning about Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. It's... Been bitter nights are calling, can't find no sleep. Can't you see I'm falling? Oh no, yeah. Ah, lovely breath of fresh air. Hopefully by now you know that every time you take a breath, you're not just breathing in oxygen because air is a mixture, right? It's comprised of nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, water vapor, and a few other trace gases. And we also know that air exerts a pressure. So how much pressure can be attributed to each of the individual gases? Well, that's where Dalton's Law of Partial Pressure comes in. And it's actually very simple. It basically says, that the individual pressures of all of the gases add up to equal the total pressure. Yep, that's it, you add. So if you're given all the individual pressures, you simply add them all together, there's your total pressure. Or if you're given the total pressure and then some of the partial pressures, you subtract them to find whatever's missing. It really is that easy. What makes these types of problems more difficult is when you are given pressures in different units. Because then you gotta convert them all to the same unit and make sure they're all in the same unit so that you can actually do your adding and subtracting like normal. So let me show you what I mean. Grab yourself a calculator and meet me on the inside of the computer. Let's go. Okay, so before we try our first problem here. I'm going to point out right up top, these are the uh, the conversion factors that will allow us to convert between our units of pressure. So if you don't have them in your notes, you might want to write them down so that you've got them. All right, so let's read the first question here. It says, a sample of air contains nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, water, and other trace gases. The partial pressures, respectively, are 0 0.230 atm, 113 millimeters mercury, 58.6 kilopascals, 0.133 atm or atmospheres, and 0 0.0240 atmospheres. What is the total pressure in atmospheres? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is make sure that all of our units of pressure here are actually in atmospheres. So we're going to start with the 113 millimeters mercury, put that over one, we're going to convert that into atmosphere. So since the millimeter mercury is on top, that means it's going to go here on the bottom with ATM on the top. According to our conversion factor, we have one ATM and 760 millimeters mercury. So really what's happening here is we're going to do 113 divided by 760. And so when we do that, we get 0.14868 blah 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 which we can have three sig figs so that gets rounded to 0.149 and that is atmospheres okay the other uh, unit is this 58.6 kilopascals which we will need to convert into atmospheres as well so kpa on the bottom atm on the top that's one ATM, and as we see here, 101.3 kPa. So it's 58.6 divided by 101.3, and what we end up with is 0.57847, which then rounds to 0.578 atmospheres with the correct sig figs. So now that everything is successfully converted into atmospheres, it's just a simple matter of adding all of these numbers up because it's asking for the total pressure. So the total pressure here is going to be equal to 0 0.230 plus 0.149 plus 0.578 plus 0.133 plus 0 0.0240. So you just grab your calculator, you add them all up, and we find that the total pressure is equal to 1.114 atmospheres. And it really is that simple. All right, so let me scroll down here and bring up this second question. 
and I would like for you to try this one on your own. So real quick, I'm going to ask you to pause. You'll pause the video, you'll work it out, and then once you're ready, hit start again. The answers will show up, and I will talk you through it. All right, so get ready to pause here in one, two, three, pause. All right, so here are the answers. So the, the, the top part here, we're just simply converting these two values into kilopascals, just like we did in the previous question. The only thing that makes this one slightly different is that this time I actually gave you the total pressure, so that's the 102, and then you're actually going to subtract the three values, the three partial pressures, to find whatever's left over. And that is our final answer, the partial pressure of water. All right, so that's how it's done. Thanks a lot. Well, once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any further questions, please be sure to comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And while you're at it, why don't you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and you know what? You just might find that when you wake up tomorrow morning, you'll just have this sense of calm and peace just because you subscribed. Remember, I'm not Dan and neither are you. Check you later.